City strife, horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sun spin, and put the horses in to the barn, then time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This light pleases me. It is plain to see I'm living my bucolic life. Welcome back. Welcome back. It is a springtimey day and I am ready for a fun, lighthearted project. So I am going to be making a hippie shirt. Well, at least that's what I'm going to call it. Um, here we go. I think that these look lovely. And honestly, I, I'm kind of torn. I have a really fun fabric, so I think it's going to be this, but I might jump off the deep end and throw lace insets in or something like that. I haven't quite decided yet, but right now in my mind, it's looking like this version here. And you can see on the back, these sleeves, they're kind of like little bells at the bottom. They're really neat. I like it. So the fabric I'm going to be using is 100% cotton. I have pre-washed in hot, pre-dried in hot, all shrunk up. And this is it. It is a just a calico lightweight cotton calico, but I think that that's going to be nice and fun and I'm ready for bright and cheerful. So let me go ahead, get my pattern paper all spread out, see what pieces I need. And if there's any modifications that I need to do, I will turn the camera back on. Okay, so I've got my pieces cut out and yes, there is some things I'm going to need to change. This upper part of the sleeve is very narrow. Um, for my size, which is the size 16, it's only giving me a 14 inch finished width of my sleeve. So I put my little measuring tape at 14 inch, put it around my arm. It'll go around my arm, but I don't have any ease. I want to add two, two and a half inches of width here. And you can see it, well, maybe you can't, but it kind of angles in. So, okay, so this piece is going to get sewn onto this piece. That can't be. Okay, it'll get sewn onto this piece here, which should then get sewn onto this piece. Okay, and then this one here is kind of gathered so it cinches back in. Otherwise, you have the big bell sleeve option which is the view C, if you just leave it big like that. So let me tell you how I'm going to fix this. Okay, lining up this dot at the top, making sure my green line is straight, you know, parallel to one of my grid lines on my table. I am just going to draw a line straight up here. Pizza pencil because all my pens keep running out of ink for some reason. Okay. And now I'm going to cut this up to the dot for my size up here at the top. So with this opened all the way up to my dot up there, I'm just going to put a little weight to hold it in place. At this bullseye, I'm going to draw another line straight across at a 90 degree angle to the one I just drew. And I need to get back there, come in and on that line I just drew, cut all the way over to about 5 eighths of an inch from the side thereabouts. Okay, so with all of those pieces cut, I'm going to stick a weight on the top. At this point where this bullseye is, that's where I need my two and a half inches. So I'm just going to pull each top corner out so that this piece is ending about an inch and a quarter 
from that center mark. Put a weight here. And this one, we pull out just a bit more. Put a weight here. I'm not really worrying about the wrinkles up there for now. We'll deal with that later. Okay, so now that this is out here, I don't want this just to be flared all the way out. So I'm gonna pick it up so it kind of overlaps the top one and straighten it out. So it's gonna sit. We need another weight like this on this side. And over here, doing the same, just kind of straightening out this side over here, like so, okay? So now let me get some tape and tape these together here in a patch to go in the middle. Okay, so I got these two taped, very shiny. Grabbed a piece of paper from my trash bin just now, and I'm just gonna kind of put this over the opening and tape it in place in a couple spots so that I will have this sealed up so it won't want to compress. Okay, so this is done here. Now, I want to carefully measure the space that I added, which is one, one, two, two and a quarter inches is what I added, okay? So I'm gonna need to add that to the piece that I have to sew to it. And I'm just gonna put it right in the middle, so. I'm gonna fold this in half so I can get that midpoint crease here, which happens to be where the notch is. Grab another scrap piece of tissue paper. Yeah, I like to cut the print off because sometimes that can be distracting. Okay, so if I put my scrap paper right here, line this piece up and put a piece of tape on that. Put it so the edge is on this measurement line. Then I can put this piece lined up nice and square right here. Don't go anywhere. And so now it will match when I go to sew this piece onto that. And for the bottom one, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Cut it in half, pull it out, add a two and a quarter inch slot right in the middle, and then everything should match. So that is my sleeve. Now the um, top is actually fairly straight at the hip, which, you know, concerns me because I have large hips. It fits, it's going to fit me well at the chest. It's got plenty of room at the waist, but at the hip, I only have a few inches of ease and I would rather have more, you know, something like this. I would rather have it look a lot more blousey. You can see even on this very thin model, it comes fairly straight. So um, I'm gonna make this adjustment though when I'm actually cutting out my fabric and I'll show you that in a bit. So I did pre-wash and pre-dry this fabric. I, I surge it before I do that so it doesn't unravel. But I wanna make sure that it's actually on the straight because it looked a little off to me. And it looks like I've got about, if I tear it straight across, I got a couple inches over here and about half an inch over here. So good thing to do, if you su suspect it might be off green a little bit. And so now I can go ahead and fold up my new two top corners and my fabric will be a lot more straight when I go to cut it out. Okay, so I am about to cut out my main bodice pieces and I'm going to be making a change. I want to point it out, they want you to uh, leave the very back open and then put a button closure on the top up here. And I'm looking at this and looking at the size of the neckline and I don't think I'm going to need that. Um, I think I'll be able to pull my head through here just fine and Quite honestly, I don't feel like dealing with that hassle. If I can get rid of that back opening, what that is gonna do is make it so that I can cut my back piece on a fold instead of cutting two of them, okay? So 
that's going to help me in another way because what I want to do is place this piece. This is the center back, which was previously two pieces sewn together. So I'm going to lay it so that my seam allowance is sticking out up there. Okay. We just stick a little pin right here to anchor it on. The bottom of this pattern has a hip measurement of 46 inches for my size. And like I said, I can get that around my hips. I just want it to be a little more swooshy. So if I want to add um, four inches to this, then if I put an extra inch on each piece, so I have one inch on each side of the back piece and one inch on each side of the front piece, it's going to give me the extra four inches, which will give me more ease, which is what I want. Okay, so I have a little mark here at five, eight, seven inch. I want to tug this outside edge of my fabric or of my pattern out until this little mark that I made it at the edge at that five eighths is now out here at the one inch position. So now that this is out one inch, I'm just going to pin it in place like this, you know, ease out to this extra little bit here and cut around there one back piece on the fold and up here at the top, everything is staying the same. The armhole is staying the same. So I think that we're going to be good there. So I am cutting things all kinds of crazy ways here. So why stop now? This yoke back piece, I'm going to be doing the same thing, cutting it on a fold. You're supposed to cut four of these. Okay, that's if they were individual. I am going to be cutting two on a fold. So where it has the center back line, I'm just going to line that up on my fold here. And yes, I am cutting them. You know, this is the main grain line. This is 90 degrees different. This is such a busy pattern and calico, you know, it's stable. It's a very stable fabric. So there should be no issue with cutting my little yoke pieces in this direction. So for this front piece, doing the same thing I did with the back. Now the front one was designed to be cut on a fold, so that makes it easier. Just going to put a little pin up here in this top corner to hold it in place. And put my ruler down here at the very edge and pull out the pattern until the bottom corner lines up at the one inch mark on my ruler and stick a pin down here and cut it out that way. Okay, so several, several hours have passed. I on, went on a massive adventure to go pick up a whole bunch of fabric and that was fun. So now I am back here and looking at the instructions, I'm doing view B, which is this one here, okay? So I'm skipping the underlining part because that is basically this one. And I am skipping putting the lace trim on the front because that is also this one. And I am skipping sewing up the back seam since we cut it on a fold. I'm skipping making the little, you know, opening for the button closure because we don't need that. So I'm going to start all the way down here at the yoke on step number six. So I'm going to get my pieces three and four. So I'm going to start with my piece number three. First thing I'm going to do is clip my notches while it's still all folded together here. I have two of them cut on a fold and there is a little mark triangle up here which is shoulder placement. So I'm going to punch that out. This is my little piece of leather that I put under the tissue paper. Punch out my little dot over here, which should be for sleeve placement. And it says for view D, you punch out this one. Well, I'm doing view B, so I'm going to be skipping this one here. And the same on piece number four, the yoke front. I'm going to mark this shoulder placement. I'm going to mark this dot and this dot over here. Didn't even see that shoulder placement is up here. Clip my notches. And uh, once, in case you've never seen it before, once I have the little circle punched out, 
I come back with my heat erasable pen and I can color in my little mark right there. And on a pattern this busy, after I make that mark, I circle it because then it'll show up a whole lot better for me. So let me finish marking both of these pieces. Okay, so now that those dots are put on, this one down here, this dot that's down here in this corner, I'm gonna need to run stay stitching on that. And so I'm just going to draw a line up here. I'm just gonna make my stitching go honestly all the way across, just to hold it in place. But I'm drawing my line at 5 8 of an inch in so that I have a good path to follow when I stay stitch this. Um, okay, so making sure that, there you go, if you can see. So I'm gonna start here, come down, and instead of just stopping here, you know, why? So I'm gonna just take it all the way across to this side at that point, and then turn up and go another inch or so up here. And I'm going to uh, run that row of stitching on both of these front yoke pieces. So this is the machine that I'm gonna be using today. This is one of the ones that I totally stripped down, cleaned up, rebuilt, restored, repainted, and everything on my other uh, channel, the Promethean Sewing Machine channel. So it's a Singer 66 from the late 40s. Fabulous, strong beast. If you're interested in this machine, I do have it for sale. It is at PrometheanSewingMachines.com. I'll put a link in the description and that is all you'll hear about me talking about that. But let me go ahead and get started here. Okay, so my thing here is going to look different from theirs because they are dealing with two back pieces and I'm dealing with one on a fold. So what I am going to be doing is making two sets of these, taking a back piece and a front piece, matching up the shoulders, sewing it at 5 8 of an inch, and I can do this here, pressing these seam allowances open. So I'm gonna do that on this one and this one. Okay, so this is what it looks like now. I went ahead and ironed my front, so all my marks are gone, but I can see my thread line, so I know where that dot is. So I'm going to lay these down, right sides together, and match up the neckline, uh, matching up my front corners, my shoulder seams, my center backs and everything. And I'm going to sew all the way around here at 5 8 of an inch, you know, paying attention to my little stay stitching line here and following that. Um, once I get that done, I'm gonna be doing some trimming, but let's get that done first. Okay, so it's all sewn together around the neckline here. If you can see my row of stitching. So the first thing I'm going to do is clip these front corners up to that stitch line so I can open this up. Same thing over here. And I am going to pink this about leaving, leaving a fairly close edge here. I would say the top of my little peaks there are about a quarter inch away because I want to have a lot of flexibility, especially back around the neck and not a lot of bulk. So let me finish cutting this out. Okay, so it's gone all the way around and now just to keep everything the same, I'm gonna cut straight across the front. Okay, now at this point, if you think that you need to make some more clips around that back where it's really curvy here, you know, go ahead, just clip a little bit. The idea is to make it really, really flexible back here. Now, both of my fabrics are the same, so I can just choose which one I want to be the front and which one I want to be the back. It doesn't really make a difference and uh, I don't see any stitching. 
or do I? Okay, so I'm going to choose this side to be the front just because I see just a tiny bit of my stay stitching right there, which I'm going to clip off anyway. But what I need to do is now that I've chosen this as my right side, I need to understitch this. What is left of my seam allowance is towards the wrong side. All right, and so looking this way with all of the seam allowances pushed over onto my wrong side. I'm going to come back and put a row of stitching right here close to the close to the edge here through the back or the inside one through the seam allowances underneath and that's going to hold it nicely so that when I go to turn it I'll have a nice edge. All right, so I hope you can see this is my line of stay stitching right here. So I am just going to fold that and tuck it to the inside. Uh, get a nice edge here. Go over to my ironing board and press it so I have a nice edge. And when you do that, the line that has the understitching should be curving over towards the inside so that from the outside you don't you shouldn't see any stitching you shouldn't see that seam it should all be on the inside part right there okay so I did not serge around these pieces because I fully intended to have both of them tucked in you know and not showing and I just looked at the instructions here and they don't want you to do that but you know what? We're going to do it our way. And um, I think that my fabric is thin enough that I, I should be able to do a burrito up in here. And so we're going to go ahead and do that. Let me get my front piece. Ah, here it is. I need to get my front piece and uh, put some gathering stitches across the top. Now, this part is going to be encased in here. So I shouldn't need to serge it, but I am because if I'm pulling gathers on a raw edge of cotton, I don't want it to unravel. So I am going to be serging all the way around this front piece. And then once I have it serged, then I'm going to run two rows of gathering stitches between these two notches. Okay, so I have my center back or center front, I should say, marked here. And I have both sets of gathering threads put in at starting and ending at my notches up here, which are a couple inches in from the point where the armhole starts. So what I'm going to do is get my right side of my yoke, the one that does not have the understitching in it. I need to find that center front of it, which is right here. Gonna match up that center front of the yoke to the center front here. Pin it in place. And then come over here, match up the side up to the notch so I have it like this. And then pull the gathering threads until this part is nice and flat and just kind of uh, move, move them around and so it looks pretty even. Okay, so I've got it all pinned together. The gathers are not very tight, you know. I think that's it's gonna be fine. You can see there's not a huge amount of gathering in there. Um, what I'm gonna do is on my machine at about a quarter inch or so, just run a row of stitching straight across here so that it will hold itself in place and I can pull these pins out. Um, but that this line of stitching will not show. Okay, it is late and I am tired and I am making mistakes. So, just wanted to let you know where I am. Um, I am not doing burrito stuff up here because I already have my shoulder seams and everything done. And if I go to try to turn it right side out with the burrito deal going on, it's going to just put it into a knot. Um, so, 
At this point I have it sewed across here at that quarter inch seam allowance. I am just going to go ahead and sew it at 5 eighths, you know. We're just going to make this my method, sewing just the yoke outside to my bodice front, right sides together at 5 eighths of an inch and then I will go on to the next step in the morning. See you then. Good morning. It is a new day here and so where we left last were on our episode I have sewn this at 5 eighths of an inch pulling out the threads of my previous whatever. Um, now that it is sewn at 5 eighths I am not in the mood to go through and whip stitch this. On. So I'm going to be doing it slightly different. Um, but what I'm going to do first is come back in here in my seam allowance with my pinking shears and just pink off the very top where I have the surging. Um, I think that that's going to take a little bit of bulk out of here with the gathers and everything. Now that I just basically pinked off my surging here, I'm going to go over to my ironing board and I have already pressed this seam allowance up but what I'm going to do is take my inside yoke piece which is pressed up at 5 eighths of an inch here and I am going to use stitch witchery to fuse it in place so that I can come back and top stitch it from the front and know everything's going to behave. Okay so I have this fusible bond, stitch witchery, whatever that's half an inch wide. And what I'm going to do is just place that on top of the seam allowance of what I just sewed. And you know, I'm going to do this in like six inch sections here I think. And I want to place my folded edge so it just covers that stitching line. Um, I don't want the stitching to show. Okay, so now that is down there. It's in place. It's not going to move. And I'm going to just kind of continue in just doing a few inches at a time here all the way across. Okay, so now from the outside, I'm going to go over to my sewing machine and I'm just going to edge stitch this um, just barely on this side of this little seam line. And that edge stitch is going to lock the bottom part in. Um, and also give a nice touch up here. Okay, so there it is on the right side, my little stitching right across here. And on the inside, um, you can see that it's covering that edge uniformly. It's really nice. I don't have to worry about it missing spots because it's fused into place. And there you go. So now I need to do something very similar for the back piece. I don't think that the back has gathers like the front. Um, so this actually should be a little bit easier here. Okay, so just like regular, first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and clip my notches. And the dot that's in this back point right here, I'm ignoring that because that is if you had opened the back neck and put a little button loop. You know, skipping that. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and surge totally around this piece. That is a scrap. Once I have it surged um, just on the edges, I'm going to go ahead and press it and then we'll pin it onto the yoke. Okay, so this is my back piece and I have it surged and so I'm just going to take the right side of my yoke, okay, and Put it right sides to right sides with my back. No gathering, just stitch it at 5 eighths of an inch and then press this seam allowance up. Okay, so now that I have it stitched on, I'm going to do the exact same thing I did with the front where I take my inside yoke, turn it under 5 eighths of an inch and then press that with the stitch witchery so that the edge of my um, underside of my yoke just barely covers the stitching line of this seam right here. And then I'll go ahead and top stitch it just like I did right here. Okay, so this looks bright and cheerful here. Um, I haven't done the sides yet. I'm just going to go ahead and drape this over my dress form so I can get started working on the sleeves. 
so I'm going to go ahead and get started on the sleeves and at this point my plan is to construct the sleeves flat and set it in flat and then sew the one big side seam from down here all the way up down to the bottom of the bodice that's my plan right now so I'm going to start with my upper sleeve I got notches to clip and I'm also going to clip up here at the very top and then there's some little circles here that I'm going to punch out which is going to indicate the beginning and ending of easing up here at the top and I'm going to take a peek on the pattern it, it's just barely eased it shouldn't be gathered up there so there shouldn't be a whole lot going on here so that's good all right so I'm going to go ahead and serge completely around this piece and then mark these dots on the wrong side of the fabric okay so I've got it surged around and the other thing I'm going to mark here is I'm going to put a letter B on the back side of both of my sleeve pieces so it's easy for me to figure out which which is the front and which is the back that's important so now that I've done that I can come up here draw my little circles I'm just going to put a line up here at the center top I did clip it but sometimes my notches disappear so it's going to look like that I got obvious circles here the line at the top my big old letter B and these are ready to go so at this point I need to do this one that they're calling the sleeve band um, having doubts as to why I didn't cut this in a contrast or lace or something because it's just going to go from busy fabric to busy fabric to busy fabric but you know what that is fine so let me go ahead and serge around both of these pieces Okay, so I'm just going to put one of my sleeve pieces down. These are basically the same both sides, the notches in the middle. So however you want to put it on is good with me. Just going to match up the sides. One here. One here. Stretch it across and match it. And I'm going to sew this straight across here at five eighths of an inch and then press the seam allowance up towards the top of the sleeve okay so those pieces are done and basically i'm just going to sew a whole nother level onto the bottom there with this piece so you see what i mean where it's just the same so you know anyway what i'm going to do is uh, serge around each one of these pieces first and once they're surged, then um, the bottom of this piece is going to be uh, made into a casing that elastic is going to be put through so that it will have that little bell looking type bottom like that. Can you see? So we'll have that bell looking kind of bottom like that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and attach it first and then put in the casing. Uh, these bottom part surge I'm just going to flip this over and again this piece is the same front and back it's just a big half circle so I'm going to match up the edges the centers and then everything in between and once again sewing this seam here at a 5 8 inch seam allowance and then pressing it up towards the top just like this one okay so I am going to use quarter inch elastic to go around the sleeves here you can see there's a lot of fabric that's going to get cinched into that elastic and the instructions say take your wrist and add one inch so there you go I'm going to cut two of these here and here now um, turning up a hem on something that is this circular can be a little bit challenging so I am going to ease it in so let me take you over to my sewing machine so I can show you what I mean I want to show you what I did because I'm going to need to fix it when I was cutting out my pattern um, I cut out the right size down here but I cut out the wrong size up here so one side of my bottom piece 
is you know that much longer than the other side so I'm just going to trim my bottom here let's see so this side is actually a little bit longer I'm just going to get my scissors right now and just kind of trim it off I'm going to trim off that serging and everything right now just to even it up because it's important that your fabric is the same size before you get started. Okay, so with that being done, what I'm doing is I'm putting my stitch length pretty long. Um, this doesn't have an excessively long stitch length, but what it does have, I'm moving it down there. And so it's basically finger easing and turning at the same time. So I'm just gonna turn my serged edge under, you know, so I have a tiny, tiny looking little hem like that that I'm looking at. Put that underneath my foot. Try and move my light so I'm not in the way. And then as I sew, I'm going to turn it, okay? But here's the thing. Let me get it started first. Okay, as the fabric comes out the back, I'm going to finger ease it. So I'm just going to push this finger up against the back of the presser foot. And it's going to want to bunch up. Okay, and when it gets a little bit too full, I just move my finger and let it go and start again. Okay, and what this is doing is working just a little bit of ease into this tiny little hem all the way around. Okay, so now that all of that is done, when I come over to my ironing board, I'm just gonna eyeball about a 5 8 inch hem here. I'm going to try not to use too much steam so I don't steam up my camera. Let me move this over a bit here. So you can see the bottom edge is going to want to curve in, which is going to make it a whole lot easier. So all I need to do is just kind of place it where it looks good and iron it. Like that. Okay, and so it's going to lay nice and flat. And then I'll come back on my machine and just stitch right along the edge, holding it down. I'm leaving these open so I can feed my elastic through the casing all the way across. Now when I get close to the edge over here, just to make sure everything is good, I'm going to just match up this seam line up here with this one. And make sure down here at the bottom that when this is matched up, wherever I need to fold it, on, right there. So wherever I need to fold it um, so that the bottom edge is exactly the same, I can just make a slight adjustment there, you know, if it's a little bit higher, like mine is slightly higher here, nobody's going to care. So let me go ahead and get this edge stitched and then we'll feed the elastic through. Okay, so I've got my little bodkin here with my pre-cut elastic on it and there is a lot of fabric to put through here. So what I'm going to do is when I get to this point where the tail of my elastic is just barely even, oops went a little too far, but when it's just barely even with my edge of my fabric here I'm going to pin it into place so that when I go to sew this seam together um, it's going to anchor that elastic in and then I can try to make sure that my elastic doesn't get twisted as I work my way across the whole sleeve. Okay, so now that I have it here, I'm going to go over to my machine and just run a, a few stitches back and forth inside of where the seam allowance is going to be just to anchor the elastic in there so it's not going to want to pop back in and that way I can pull these pins out. Now that this part is done, I'm going to come back to the top. And remember I've got these two dots here in my center top. I need to put a little bit of gathering stitches up here. I am tempted just to do more of this up here just to see if that is enough to make it work. So um, that's what I'm going to do on one of the sleeves. If it doesn't work on one of the sleeves, then I'll know for the second sleeve. Okay, so that's what I did. I did that same little finger easing kind of stitch on here and I think it's going to be enough because I was able to put it over my pressing mitt at the ironing board and it did make a nicely formed cap sleeve. So what I'm going to do is 
I need to show you what I'm talking about. Hold on. So this is the little mitt I'm talking about. It's just one of these pressing mitts. I think I got this one at the waywalk.com catalog and a couple bookends to hold it up. So if you've put ease stitches or something at the top of a sleeve head, the top of this pressing mitt is an excellent shape to mold that. And so what I do is just put it over the top and at the point that's about 5 8 inch in, that's where I want the very top, this little ridge right here of my sleeve mitt or of my um, sleeve mitt to match up basically at the stitching line. And then if pretend I have a whole lot of steam here and I'm steaming it and steaming it like crazy, then I can come back and just kind of squeeze it and it should just lift off and hold that shape so that I can go ahead and then set this into my sleeves. Okay, so now I have my yoke opened up here. This is my front, it has gathers. This is my back, it does not. And I wanna make sure I'm matching up the back part of my sleeve to the back part of my blouse. So I'm gonna match up my shoulder center point with the shoulder seam here. And down here at the bottom, I'm gonna pin it very carefully to try to work this curve in at the top. Now there is still a fair amount of ease to work in here, but um, I'm not worried so much of what's going on at the top. I'm, I'm more concerned with what's happening in at the 5 8 inch point. And in a lot of places where it looks like it's really loose up at the top, well, down here, it's fitting well, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and sew this on at 5 8 of an inch. I'm gonna be placing it on the machine with the sleeve part down and the yoke part up. That way, if there is any extra ease to work in, I can let the feed dogs, you know, do their little pulling and work any in that I need it to. So starting over here, 5 eighths of an inch all the way around. Okay, so that made a really nice shoulder seam right here. I know it's really, really busy, but trust me, it is very nice. And I'm pressing the seam allowance towards the sleeve, okay? So let me go ahead and put the other sleeve on now. Okay, so this is it. I have not sewed the side seams together. I just have it pinned down here and up here, right under the arm. I just wanted to make sure that I indeed had enough room to move around, and I think adding that extra extra four inches around the bottom was a good call. That basically added that much. And yeah, it would have fit around me without adding it, but with adding it, lots, lots more room. And that's what I wanted. Something that looks this, you know, fun and focused, you don't want to be tight down there. So I think that it is ready to go ahead and sew up, you know, the inside seam. This whole thing I'm just gonna do is one big seam and underneath the arm, I'll come back a second time just to reinforce it, you know? And then after that, hemming up the bottom. Okay, so I've got double row of stitching here under the arm. Don't know if you can see that. It's stitched from here all the way down. I was trying to be careful to make sure that I matched up where these seams are also probably not that disastrous if they're slightly misaligned. Um, and then after that, I came back and this seam here, that is the sleeve being sewn onto that yoke, I made a couple little clips on either side of that underarm seam that I just made, just so that it won't want to bind in on itself. So now the very last thing I need to do is hem the bottom. And this is just going to be a very basic, small hem. I'm just going to turn it up maybe about three eighths of an inch and turn it up about half an inch, press it and do a straight stitch across the top.
so here it is, you know, comfortable little top. I hope that you understood the changes that I made. Um, I can tell you that omitting that back opening and the back button, it was fine. There's plenty of room to pull my head through this hole, so it's comfortable. I like it. It's kind of a light and breezy top and my cat is rubbing on the tripod so that's why it's jiggling. So sorry about that. But it's a beautiful day today. I got so many projects I need to do today so I am just going to say thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. City strife. Horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I could get so much thin and move the horses in to the barn. Then time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful park houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This light pleases me. It is plain to see I'm living my bucolic life.